All right, everybody, welcome back. So we are here today in one of my comfort jets, and actually literally the only reason I ground out the Chinese tree, the J7E. This is an extremely modern version of the MiG-21, and it actually was in production until 2001, which, by the way, is only three years before the F-22 entered service in 2004. Kind of wild to think about. But this was essentially the Chinese attempt to make an extremely agile MiG-21, and if my memory is correct, they were trying to make one that would be somewhat able to keep up with stuff like, you know, the F-16, for example. This led them to go with a lighter design that uses special alloys, a new engine, and other stuff as well. So, it actually winds up being much lighter than the MiG-21 BIS, and it has a new wing at it as well. You probably noticed it already, but it has what's called a double delta design, which is very unique. No other MiG-21 in the game has it. And the combination of this feature, plus this wider wingspan and of course a lighter weight in general, makes this thing substantially better in dogfights compared to the other MiG-21s, especially the BIS, which is the same BR. Now, the BIS does have a better thrust to weight ratio if you look at this chart right here at pretty much every speed, but up until around, you know, a little bit above Mach, it's not that big of a difference, and the J7E still has above a 1 to 1 thrust to weight ratio, clean with a 30% fuel load, of course, but still at basically every speed. The J7E is essentially what you'd expect to have if a MiG-21 and an F5 had a baby, and it is very, very fun to fly. You can dogfight most aircraft that you'll find in these 11.0-12.0 lobbies, although of course the 4th gens will give you a tough run for your money, especially the F-16. The F-16 is just a better aircraft than this when it comes to dogfighting in a 1v1. However, it's close enough, and considering the level of most of the players that you're going to be facing, you can typically take care of them in the first few turns before the F-16 is actually able to go ahead and utilize the advantage that it has. There is one downside of this aircraft as of late, and that's the gun. Uh, the NR-30 used to be my favorite Soviet gun, and it actually recently, with all the real shatter changes and everything else, at some point, it lost that really potent killing power that it once had. So you're going to get a lot more hits, a lot more crits than you used to. Now, I have still had pretty good luck with it, and I do still prefer it over the GISH-23. I've had quite a few one-shots, or at least you know, severe damage, whenever I actually hit the target. But it's definitely not what it used to be. Shots like this right here would have killed in the past, and now it just snapped off his rudder. Something happened to the high explosive mass. I don't know if it's intended or not, and hopefully it'll get changed at some point, just because, in my humble opinion, if a 30 mil hits an aircraft, the aircraft should be insanely severely damaged, but that's just me. You do also have to be very, very sparing with your trigger time. You only get one gun, which has to make it a little bit more difficult, but the really big issue is the fact that you can get 60 rounds of ammo. 60 rounds per gun means that you get less than 4 seconds of trigger time, and with the lacking damage as it is, that can be a pretty big problem. There have been several times where I have just simply not been able to kill more people because I ran out of ammo, and partially that was because I was spraying. The gun still won't be your main method of killing people for the most part, although I have had some really good luck with it this gaming session. The missiles are going to be what gets the majority of your kills, and I am personally a really, really big fan of the PL-5B. So for those of y'all who haven't used this before, this is a 30G IR missile, rear aspect only, but it's kind of like the Python in the fact that it has a very strong booster with very short burn time. Take a look at the Inline J, for example, which is, you know, very commonly seen in other aircraft around this BR. It has 2.2 second burn time at 18,100 newtons of force with 76.93 kilograms mass. And it actually has some pretty good acceleration, especially when you look at stuff like the M9G, for example. The M9G is a better missile, in my opinion, and you do, of course, get more range with the M9G, but it does accelerate moderately quickly, especially when compared to the M9J. Now we get onto the PL5B. Oh. Oh, wow. 27,900 newtons of force with a 2 second burn time, so sure, it does have 0.2 seconds less burn, but at 84.5 kilograms, that is a less than 10 kilogram difference for almost 10,000 newtons more force than that booster. And once it's burned out, there is only like a 1 kilogram difference in weight between the two. So you can probably see exactly how this thing is such incredible when it comes to acceleration, and it has pretty good range as well. Certainly much better than the A9J. That also comes with an only two second burn time. And for those of y'all who don't know, the red marker for missiles only shows up when it's burning. 
So that means the PL5 is less likely to be seen than something like the Aimla G, for example, which has a 5.3 second burn time. Technically, the PL5B also has very slightly better flare resistance. It has the same range bands, which if you don't know, this is what governs the sensitivity to different stuff as, you know, the Aimline J, the Aimline G, and other missiles. However, it has a 2.4 degree FOV compared to the 2.5 found on the Sidewinders. Will it actually make a difference? Nah, not really. Uh, the bigger difference, in my opinion, is just how fast it accelerates, because the closer a missile is to a target, the less flares that it can see. Of course, that does combine with the very, very slight field of view reduction, but just in general, the fact that you can just shove this missile at the target so incredibly quickly is what allows it to ignore flares so consistently, at least at shorter ranges. This works very well against planes, such as the F-14, for example, which are very hot, and I've had stuff like the F-14B, for example, just be simply unable to flare this missile within like two kilometers rear aspect, at least without cutting throttle all the way. If you just cut your afterburner, a lot of the time this thing is just going to keep reacquiring you. Another thing you really look for in these, you know, rat planes like the J7E or the F5 is survivability. And uh, yeah, this thing is very good at that as well, because in addition to the energy retention, it also has a modern RW war that tells you what threats are looking at you, what's locking onto you, etc. And it has 72 countermeasures. And not just that, it's 72 pops of countermeasures. So unlike the F-16, for example, which only gets 60 countermeasures, and they pop two at a time, which means that, say, for example, if you want to run chaff, you only get 15 pops of countermeasures, or 30 with just flares, you get 72 pops of flares at flare only, or 36 pops with flares in chaff. Just to put that in perspective, you get more pops of countermeasures with chaff than the F-16A does with only flares. And with 16v16 being the way it is, and all the missiles flying around, this is a huge benefit to you. I personally do still like running chaff, just you know, for whenever I do climb. But if you don't, you can always just abuse multipath, stay low like I'm doing right here, and you won't pretty much ever run out of countermeasures. That's pretty much it. Uh, I do want to give one word of caution. For those of you who are watching this video, there is a premium called the J7D. You might be sitting here looking at this video thinking, oh, this plane looks amazing. It is such an excellent flying machine. I want to get that, right? And you go to pay, you know, your $70 to buy the J7D. Don't. That is a completely different beast. I recommend checking out Jake's MiG-21 video. He talks about it in more detail there. But essentially, that is in between MiG-21 MF and MiG-21 SMT levels of performance, it doesn't get the fancy wing like this one does. It is a much, much worse airframe when you're fighting all these vehicles that I've been fighting here today. And in any case, hope you enjoyed the video. It's been a long time coming. I kept thinking about doing a, you know, J7E video, never got around to it. So I hope you enjoyed. I'll catch y'all next time and uh, peace, y'all.